we're going to take a close look at the normal distribution. First thing we need to talk about is density curves. And what a density curve is, is it's a curve that would represent your distribution. Now, realize that a density curve doesn't have to fit your data points exactly. So if you had done a frequency histogram, and it maybe looked something like this, your density curve might come like that. So it doesn't fit your data exactly, but what it is is it's a smooth curve that you would lie over top your frequency that would fit the general shape of your frequency graph. A density curve is always above or on the horizontal axis because you can't have a negative frequency. And then the total area under a density curve is 1 because if you did a frequency histogram, all of these frequencies um, added together and then divided by your total would give you a 1. So if you did a relative frequency, all the decimals would add up to 1. So our area is 1. One important thing that we will come back to is that the percentage of all possible observations of a variable that lie within a specific range equals approximately the area under the density curve expressed as a percentage. So what that means is if I have this density curve and I'm interested in, well, what values lie between A and B, what I could do is I could find the area underneath my density curve here, and that would correspond to the percent of values that would lie between those specific things, those specific values. So let's say I found this area to be um, 0.72. Well, that would tell me that approximately 72% of my data values lied between whatever value A and value B. We will come back to this a lot in this sections. Okay, now the normal curve is kind of a special density curve, and a normal curve is your general bell-shaped curve, meaning it comes up and nice comes down nicely. It's symmetrical. And a couple things about your normal curve. There are a lot of things in nature that will fit um, a normal curve. Things like um, people's resting heart rates, IQ scores, um, shoe sizes. Things like that will generally fit a normal curve if you look at the population. A normal curve is completely determined by two parameters. And that is the mean and the standard deviation. So for any particular data set, it has a special normal curve that fits with it. So if I had a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2, my normal curve would have down the center my mean of 10 because it's symmetrical on both sides. And then with my standard deviation of 2, we're going to use the three standard deviation rule to mark out our three standard deviations. So we'd have 12, 14, and 16 and then 8, 6, and 4. So that could be a picture of the normal curve determined by the parameters mu is 10 and sigma is 2. Okay, now when we're working with data sets, we are almost always going to have to standardize them. And the reason we standardize it is because it gets everything onto the same scale. When we standardize, our mean is always 0 and our standard deviation will always become 1. Now, we do, um, when we standardize a data set, we get the standard normal curve, not just the normal curve anymore. So it's very important to pick up on the word standard normal curve, because as soon as you see that word standard, that tells us that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is equal to 1. Now, our original data set can have a completely different mean and a completely different standard deviation, but after we standardize it, it will be scaled down to have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Now we do the standardizing by finding the z-scores. And a z-score is always an expression of how many standard deviations a value is away from the mean. So if we have a z-score of like 1.5, that means that whatever original value has that corresponding z-score, this original value is 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean. And our z-score formula is z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. 
Well, x is your particular data value you're trying to find the z-score for. Mu is your original mean, and sigma is your original standard deviation. Okay, we can use standard normal curves to find the percentages of any normal distribution that lies between two values. And we're going to do that in a little bit using a table. But this is one of the reasons that we standardize um, data sets, is because once we get it standardized, we can find the percentages between values of anything, as long as we standardize it. And then we can also use the standard normal curves to compare different distributions to each other because it puts them on the, uh, the same scale. It puts them on a level playing field. They have the same mean and the same standard deviation, so then we can compare two different um, distributions. Okay, now we already mentioned that with the density curve, the area under it is 1. Well, with our standard normal curve, that same thing happens. Our total area under it is 1, which represents 100% of our data values. Our normal curve will extend indefinitely in both directions, meaning it doesn't ever actually stop. It will keep going and keep going forever, and it won't cross our x-axis either. Okay, it's going to be symmetric about the mean, which is 0, because it's standardized and it's normal, and we will have a standard deviation of 1. That's what makes it standardized. Then, kind of back to our three standard deviation rules, almost all of the area under our curve will lie within three standard deviations, and we've had that rule already before. Okay, now when we do this standardized variable, we're going to come up with a bunch of z-scores, and it is used so often that they have created a table. And for us, it is table 2 back in your appendix. And it should look something like this. There's actually a whole other half to it. This is just a very small portion of it. Well, what table 2 is, is um, it's a table of the areas under the standard normal curve. So what this does for me is all of these values on the inside here, all these decimals, those are areas to the left of a particular z-score. So what that means is, let's say I was interested in a z-score of negative 2.53. Well, my z-scores are actually along the edges here, so I would need to go down here until I found negative 2.5. Then I need to track it over until I get to that 0.03. And it looks like I would have a 0 0.0057. What that tells me is that if I have a standard normal curve, and I am at the z-score of negative 2.53, the area to the left of that z-score is 0 0.0057. That's an area. Well, if we want to talk about that in terms of percentages, that would be 0.57%. So that would tell me that whatever value got me the z-score of negative 2.53, about a half of a percent of the other values will lie below that value. So with your table 2, the numbers along the edge here, those are z-scores, and the numbers on the insides are areas. It's very, very important you keep that um, straight. So what we're going to do with this is let's say that we had a, a data set, and our mean was equal to 10, our standard deviation was equal to 3, and I wanted to figure out, well, what's the area that would lie to the left of, let's pick a value, um, let's say x is equal to 1.5. So I'm interested in this original data value of 1.5. Well, in order to actually use table 2, you have got to standardize it first. So I need to take this value and I need to transform it into a z-score because my table is only in terms of z-scores. So I need to use my formula that has x minus mu divided by your standard deviation. Now when you do this, you have to make sure that you do the x minus mu first and then do the division. So when I do that, I end up getting a z-score of negative 2.833. Now that I have a z-score, I can come over here to my table and I can find negative 2.83. So 
So right there's my negative 2.8. Track it over to the 0, 03 again. And it looks like we have 0, 0, 0.0023. So the area to the left is 0, 0, 0.0023. What that tells me is that approximately 0.23% of my data values lie below my value of 1.5. So that's way over here. What it also tells me is it tells me how much lie above. Because if 0.23% lie below, and I have 100% underneath my graph here, that tells me that 99.77% lie above. We can use kind of the complement rule. We know it has to total up to 100. So we can subtract it from 100% to figure out the amount that lies above. Well, now, what if I wanted to know what percentage of the data values lied between 1.5 and, let's say, 2.5? So now I want to know what lies between those two. Well, I already know that below the 1.5 is 0 0.0023 because I found my z-score and that was negative 2.83. Well, what I need to do is I need to find my other z-score corresponding to 2.5. In order to do that, I need to use my z-score formula again. So I need to take my x minus my mu, so 2.5 minus my 10, Divide that by my standard deviation. So again, make sure you do the top first. Do that 2.5 minus 10. And then divide that out by 3. And we get a z-score of negative 2.5. So now I need to come over here and I need to find my z-score of negative 2.5. Well, it was actually negative 2.50, so I'm going to be using that value. And what that tells me is that from my z-score of negative 2.50 to the left of that is an area of 0 0.0062. Now, the question said, what lies between these two values? So I'm really interested in just this little sliver there. And this point zero zero six two represents all of this area. The point zero zero two three represents this area. So what I really need to do is I need to take my point zero six two, that whole yellow area, and I need to take away this purple part because if I take away that part, all I'm left with is the middle part that I want. So I would need to take my point zero zero six two and I would need to subtract off that point zero zero two three and I get point zero zero three nine. So between these two values is about zero point three nine percent or it has an area of point zero zero three nine. So you can find a lot of different things using the standard normal curve. You can find percentages of values to the left. You can use the complement rule to find values to the right. You can use subtraction to find values in between things. But what you have to realize is that any time you want to use table 2, you have to standardize first. You have got to find those z-scores before you use this table.